Take a look at the following data extracted from a data set that looks at predicting heart disease. Here we're given age, which is the person's age in years, thou CHH, which is the maximum heart rate of the person, and also the target, which is heart disease diagnosis. And note here that diagnosis of heart disease is defined as a larger than 50% diameter narrowing of a major blood vessel. Usually we train gradient boosted trees on large data sets with many features. This small data set is used to show how we build gradient boosted trees for classification. Since this is quite a small data set, the resulting algorithm may not be entirely accurate. Let's now go through step by step how to build gradient boosted trees for classification on this data set. First, we calculate the log odds and predicted probability of the target variable. So here we have our target variable, which is heart disease diagnosis. The log odds is given as the natural logarithm of the number of times um, our case is present, which in this case is four times, divided by the number of times our case is absent, which is three. So it's four ones and three zeros. And this gives us a value of 0 0.29. This forms the initial leaf of our gradient boosted trees. We convert this log odds into a predicted probability by using the standard logistic function. So we do e to the power of our log odds divided by 1 plus e to the power of our log odds, which gives us a value of 0 0.57. So this 0 0.57 forms our initial predicted probability for all of our entries. So you see here, we have this predicted probability column and we're predicting a 0 0.57 probability for each entry that the person has heart disease. We can then use our target and predicted probability to calculate a set of residuals. And we use the following formula. So residual equals observed value, or in this case, our actual target minus our predicted probability. And this gives us our set of residuals here. So we have minus 0 0.57 for the cases where our target is zero. Since zero minus 0 0.57 gives us minus 0 0.57. And we have 0 0.43 for the cases where our target is one, since one minus 0 0.57 gives us 0 0.43. Next, we build a decision tree to predict the residuals. So we use the person's age and maximum heart rate to predict the residual. And this results in the following decision tree. Next, we need to calculate the outputs of the decision tree. And for that, we can use the formula. R right here is given the residual of entry i in the leaf. And pi is a previous predicted probability of entry i in the leaf. So for example, if we were looking at leaf number one, R1 would be 0 0.43, R2 would be 0 0.43 and R3 would be 0 0.43. And in this case, P1 would be 0 0.57. Since if we go back, that was our previous predicted probability. And so P1, P2 and P3 would all be 0 0.57. So applying the formula to leaf one, we have three times 0 0.43 on the top and three times uh, 0 0.57 times one minus 0 0.57 on the bottom. And this gives us a value of 1.75. And that's our output for leaf one. For leaf two, we have two residuals, uh, 0 0.43 and minus 0 0.57. And on the bottom, we have this here. So the previous predicted probability for all of our uh, residuals is 0 0.57. And so our output for leaf two is minus 0 0.29. And lastly, for leaf three, uh, applying the formula, we have an output of minus 2.33. And so now we can combine our initial leaf with our decision tree. And you note here that we have calculated the outputs and put it beneath each of the leaves. And here we introduce a learning rate of 0 0.5 to reduce overfitting. So let's now go through an example of how we can use our combined outputs to come up with a predicted probability for each of our entries. So for our first entry here, we've got a predicted probability of 0 0.29. But how do we arrive at that? First, we calculate the log odds prediction. And for this, we do our initial leaf plus 0 0.5, which is our learning rate, and then multiplied by, and we have to now go through our decision tree. 
So is the maximum heart rate less than or equal to 146.5? It's larger than that, uh, so no. Is the age less than or equal to 62.5? It's larger than that, so no. And so we go to this leaf here, and we calculated before that the output is minus 2.33. So in total, we have 0 0.29 plus 0 0.5 times minus 2.33, and that gives us a log odds prediction of minus 0 0.875. Now we have to convert this log odds prediction into a predicted probability. And for that, we can use the standard logistic function as we did before. And applying this function results in the predicted probability of 0 0.29. So we do e to the power of our log odds prediction divided by one plus e to the power of our log odds prediction. And that gives us 0 0.29 stated here. And we apply the exact same thing for each of our entries. And here I've written out the predicted probability for each entry. We can then use those predicted probabilities to generate a new set of residuals. We can then build a decision tree on those residuals and then form another new set of predictions. And essentially what happens is that new decision trees keep being built and we add on from the mistakes of the previous decision trees. And so we keep generating these decision trees until user-defined parameters are satisfied. So for example, the number of trees could be set to 100. And so just, just building another decision tree results in the following outputs. So we have our initial leaf, the first decision tree that we built, and on the residuals produced by these two, uh, we construct another decision tree. And so using these outputs here, we can generate another set of predicted probabilities and this is the result here. Notice how in general, for where our target is zero, our predicted probability has now decreased from before. And where our target is one, in general, our probability has increased. So now we need to convert these predicted probabilities into an actual classification. So for that, we can use a decision threshold. And if we were to use a decision threshold of 0.5, we classify all people with a predicted probability larger than 0.5 as one, that is heart disease diagnosis, and less than 0.5 as zero, no heart disease diagnosis. And so applying this logic to our predicted probabilities calculated earlier, we see here that we're predicting zero for the first two entries, uh, since these predicted probabilities are less than 0.5, are predicting ones for these entries here. And in this last case here, uh, since the predicted probability is larger than 0 0.5, we predict 1, but this is actually incorrect um, since the target value is 0. So after just building two decision trees, we got very close to predicting all of the entries in this small data set. Let's say, for example, we recorded the age of somebody as 64 years old and the maximum heart rate as 175. Would our gradient boosted trees diagnose this person with heart disease? So for that, we have to run through our constructed gradient boosted trees. And so we first calculate our log odds prediction. So that's 0 0.29 plus 0 0.5 times. We go through our first decision tree. Um, so maximum heart rate is bigger than 146.5, so no. Age is bigger than 62.5, so no. And then we have minus 2.33 plus 0 0.5 times uh, the age is bigger than 62.5, so no, uh, minus 1.41. So our log odds prediction is given here, which is minus 1.58. We then convert this to a predicted probability using the standard logistic function. And that gives us a predicted probability of 0 0.17. And lastly, we use our decision threshold, which in this case we're using 0 0.5 uh, to classify this person. So 0 0.17 is less than 0 0.5, therefore we predict zero, uh, no heart disease diagnosis. In summary, to build gradient boosted trees for classification, first we calculate the log odds of the target variable. We then calculate a set of residuals. So we would convert the log odds to a predicted probability and then subtract that from our observed values to get a set of residuals. We would then build a decision tree on these residuals. 
and we would then generate a new set of predictions, which we can scale by a learning rate to reduce overfitting. So we then just keep repeating steps two, three, and four until user set parameters are matched. Uh, so for example, number of trees, which could be set to 100. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of gradient boosted trees? So I'm just going to reiterate what I said in gradient boosted trees for regression explained. So some advantages include gradient boosted trees are able to capture complex relationships and data often leading to high algorithm performance. They can be interpreted to give the importance of different features in predicting a target variable. The algorithm has parameters that can be tuned for better performance, such as setting the learning rate and number and depth of the trees. There's actually many more hyperparameters as well, which makes the algorithm very flexible on complex data. A disadvantage, however, is that it can overfit the training data without proper adjustment. So often hyperparameters need to be properly optimized uh, for the algorithm to work well. So that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and learned something new.